There is a Twitter joke. What is the difference between machine learning and artificial intelligence? Well, if it's written in Python, then it's probably machine learning. And if it's written in PowerPoint, then it's artificial intelligence. Hello, my name is Alexander Kondoforov and I'm data science competence leader at Alteksoft. And today I'm going to explain you the difference between AI term, how it's used in mass media and AI term, how it's understood by technicians. The first mentions of AI date back to the 50s. It was the time when the term artificial intelligence was coined and the first artificial neural net appeared. This neural net was inspired by the way neurons work in the human brain and up until mid-70s the field was booming with theoretical discoveries. Scientists were excited about building intelligent machines. They even believed that by 1980s we'll have so-called artificial general intelligence or strong AI. Strong AI was supposed to have cognitive abilities similar to humans, meaning that it must learn, understand the world, and reason as we do. Think of Terminator, or HAL 9000, or TARS from Interstellar. These AIs from sci-fi depict the way how artificial general intelligence must work, except for the urge to kill humans, obviously. But unfortunately, researchers did not build strong AI. Moreover, businesses and organizations did not actively use what was invented by the time. AI was mostly crafted in labs. Because of that, governments and investors lost optimism about AI. This period became known as AI winter. But things have changed in the mid 2000s because of several factors. First, significant growth of computational power and data collected for training. Second, new learning algorithms invented by scientists. And third, first real business applications achieved by Google, IBM, Amazon, which became success stories for other companies. And today, AI is everywhere. The Google search engine is AI, Alexa is AI, and even Netflix Movie Recommender is smart enough to be called AI. These are not strong AIs though. They solve very narrow tasks and they cannot use their previous experience to handle new problems, let alone try to enslave humans. But the hype is real. The artificial intelligence is so popular again that many companies are using AI in their presentations and landing pages, no matter if it's true or not. Recent research found that 40% out of 2,800 of AI startups in Europe are not using AI in fact, at least in the way as understood by professionals. AI has become a loose term for any system that can make decisions, regardless of how it works under the hood. But professionals have a little more strict understanding of the term artificial intelligence. But first, let's figure out what a decision is. In our case, a decision would be observing environment or inputs and acting to achieve a specific goal. For instance, when you Google cookie, the search algorithm decides how to rank results by their relevance. It considers many factors, including authority of the websites telling about cookies, your previous search history as well as previous search history of other users, and many more. So, if you do lots of programming research, you'll have more results related to HTTP cookies. But if you mostly Google recipes, you'll get more of that, the recipes of cookies. The decision in this example would be the content of your Google results page. By observing inputs and environment, the Google AI makes a decision which links to show you. But the problem of this definition, observing inputs and making decisions, is that even calculator falls into this category. You make an input and it decides which numbers to display, right? So, let's talk about how professionals understand AI. The professional definition of AI would be, first, the system that makes decision, and second, can be trained to make them. In most cases, such training is done using so-called machine learning. Okay. What's machine learning then? And how is it different from traditional ways the programs are created? Traditional programming means that we dictate strict and explicit rules to a machine. Rules of arithmetic, for instance. That's why we call them rule-based systems. They don't do anything we have not explicitly told them to do. But explicit programming doesn't work in many cases. Consider this. People are quite good at recognizing objects in the real world or on images. Can you distinguish a cat from a dog? Definitely but you cannot directly program a machine to do that. Imagine writing rules to recognize a cat in a picture. Think of elaborating all cat's features, given that there are different cats of different colors and the images can be taken from different angles. It would be close to impossible to write such set of rules. Things that we can teach toddlers to do can't be programmed for a machine. The same works for recognizing speech, understanding natural text, and many other things people are good at. But machine learning allows algorithms to solve such tasks as well. Machine learning doesn't use traditional and explicit programming. Instead, we make a machine to come up with rules or ways to solve a problem itself. And it can do it by learning from data. There are three main ways to train machines to solve problems. The first one is called supervised learning. 
Supervised learning means that we take a set of data and add labels to it with the right answers to the problem. We gather thousands of images of cats and dogs, manually label them, and then feed the labeled data to a learning algorithm. This algorithm learns about the specifics of cats and dogs in this data by itself. And the more data we have, the better machine learns. There is also unsupervised learning. In this case, we don't help the algorithm with the labels. Instead, we suggest it to process data by itself, group items by similarities, find anomalies, or do something similar. It won't know that there are cats and dogs, but it will divide pictures into groups with similar features. The set approach is reinforcement learning. It can be used in very specific cases when algorithms have to deal with environment. Think of robots or bots in games. To train such AI, specialists use the carrot and stick approach. First, the AI starts randomly doing all it can. If it does something right, like gaining points or jumping over an obstacle, it receives an award. If it fails, dies or trips over a fence, it's punished. After long trial and error, the AI learns how to effectively interact with its environment. If you've heard of AlphaGo, that has beaten the world champion in ancient game of Go, it was trained exactly with reinforcement learning. So, that's machine learning in a nutshell. Let's summarize. Professionals define AI by two major characteristics. First, it can learn and make decisions based on inputs and observations. And second, it's trained by the means of machine learning algorithms rather than explicitly defined rules. So, does it mean that we can train AI to be as smart as a human? The short answer is no, not yet. All best AI systems that we have today, Google Assistant or self-driving cars or Netflix movie recommender, they are all weak AIs. They are very narrow in the problems they can solve. They can be very good at one single thing they are trained to do, but absolutely incapable of doing anything else. Well, it looks like Google Assistant or Alexa can do lots of things, but in fact they are just stacks of many narrow AIs. And it goes as far as that. We are not close to inventing strong AI yet, no matter what Elon Musk is afraid of. So, I hope I cleared out some things for you. In the next videos, we'll talk about different knowledge areas related to AI. Data science, machine learning, deep learning, data mining. I'll also explain what is big data, and why big data in most cases has nothing to do with machine learning or artificial intelligence. Stay tuned, like the video, and subscribe!